Hello Space Cadets and welcome to Mueller Planetarium Astronomy at Home. This is Zach Thompson, Planetarium Coordinator at the University of Nebraska State Museum at Morrill Hall in Lincoln, Nebraska. Wishing you all clear skies. Today we are going to explore what we can still see of the winter constellations still visible through much of April. To do this we're going to be using our friend Stellarium. If you look to the right of your screen you'll see the web address stellarium.org where our star buddies are holding it up for you to see. You can follow along with us at home. The desktop or computer version that we're using is completely free. And let's make things go full screen for so we can see a little bit better. We are facing to the southwest, and it's about around 9 o'clock or a little after 9 o'clock. It's important to remember that if you want to see the night sky in all its splendor, you want clear, dark skies. Try not to be in a place that has excess light or light pollution, because that'll just dilute the darkness for you, and you're going to be missing out on the true beauty of the heavens above. So the darker, the better. Let's look over here, we're just kind of tracing casually, perhaps one of the best known constellations in the world, Orion the Hunter. Now before we bring the lines up, look at these three stars kind of in the center. We call it Orion's Belt. And we do remember that pretty well, it's kind of a focal point because they look like they're touching and it makes a nice line in the sky. Something that's very easy to visualize for a lot of us. But there is more than just a belt, this is the Hunter. We have bright stars that give us shoulders, the belt, the waist, attached to the belt is the hunting knife or the sword, and then knees or legs. Orion the Hunter was named by the Greeks, but they borrowed from early civilizations that had different names for the same constellation. If you imagine something differently, that is perfectly fine because you gotta make the stars your own. You'll find whenever you're stargazing, it's just one big game of connect the dots. So what do you see when you look at the stars? Do you imagine something different than what we're showing you? And if so, wonderful, write that down. Make up your own patterns, make up your own stories, and share that with us. Share that with your family and friends as well. That's part of the fun of the night sky. So how do we imagine Orion the Hunter? Here's one way. And as you'll see, these bright stars, they do, for the most part, give us a good shape of a person. A man or a woman, but a human being. So that's why a lot of people like this constellation. You can imagine this way or some other way, but what is helpful about the stars of Orion are that they're bright enough to draw your attention, and when you find them, you can use them to hop throughout the night sky and find other things. For example, as we put the hunter there away, let's come back to his belt, these three stars, and you see how they take you up to the right and they take you down to the left. Let's first go down to the left and find this very bright star, Sirius. As we bring up some labels for you to find, you'll also see that when you click on it on the left-hand portion of your screen, there's more information about whatever object you selected. But Sirius is the brightest star in the night sky. You can remember the name because it's seriously bright. No joke. In fact, only some visible planets in the moon are brighter than this. So on its own, it should grab your attention, but otherwise you can definitely find it going from Orion's belt down to the left. Sirius is often called the dog star, and that's because it belongs to the dog constellation. We're also going to leave Orion here just as a reference point for us. We're just going to kind of keep adding to the night sky here. But this is his hunting dog, Canis Major. That's why we call Sirius the dog star. Now Canis Major is just Greek for the big dog. If you have a dog or you know someone who does, this is your constellation. It might take a little bit of a stretch here and there, but you can kind of pick out a dog. It depends what breed or what size or type of dog you've got. But yes, indeed, Sirius is the bright one of this whole constellation. And in fact, this dog is one of the hunting companions of Orion the Hunter. So he's not alone up there in the sky. He, he does have his best friend and in fact, best friends with him. Because when we take Sirius and then we shoot a line straight up in the sky, just straight up from Sirius, you'll find this other star, Procyon. Now, Procyon's not quite as bright as Sirius, but it is still quite prominent in the sky, especially here as we're moving our winter constellations down as we head more into spring. But Procyon is just another one of Orion's dogs. Now, hiding the names of the stars, let's, let's be realistic here. Procyon and one other star, 
is supposed to be one entire constellation. So in your imagination, these two, two stars, this one line, is that a dog? Maybe, maybe not. Here's one way to imagine it. This is another hunting dog of Orion. So he's got companions up there in the sky. Maybe he's going off on a hunt or some adventure, but these are his two dogs. And how do you find that again? You go from the belt stars of Orion down to the left to find Sirius and come straight up to find Procyon. Now let's do the other way with his belt. Let's go up to the right. There's a V shape. If you're viewing this on a small screen, it might be hard to see our mouse tracing this out for you, but there is a V shape, and if you go straight up from Orion's belt, you will land on this star, Aldebaran, kind of an orange-red sort of star. Now, Aldebaran is the bright star of Taurus the Bull. So as we hide the star names there, just so you can visualize this a little bit better. Coming up from his belt, there's the V-shape. It's the bull's face. Aldebaran is the right eye, or the bull's eye of Taurus. Maybe this will help you to imagine a little bit better there. So the right eye, it's kind of looking back at you. So if you look up at it, he's looking right back at you. So you both see each other, the bull and you. Then there are horn stars up here in the sky. The V shape might be the easiest for you to see. In fact, it's not just a V of stars, it's actually something called a star cluster, the Hyades. So if you have a pair of binoculars, we strongly recommend taking binoculars and moving them just along the bull's face. You'll see way more stars than you can with just the naked eye. But without any assistance from binoculars or telescope, it is a pretty beautiful sight to see. And the tip off that you found it again is Aldebaran, the bull's eye. It's a bull halfway in and half out of the night sky, so if you imagine something differently, go right ahead. You'll also notice that within Taurus the bull, there's this bright object. What is that bright object? Why, that's the planet Venus. So Venus is still quite visible in our early evening skies, so you get the stars and you also get the bonus of bright Venus. And then, just near Venus here in the sky, you will notice, as we hide the label of the planet there, but let's bring our constellations up one more time. Still within Venus, look right about here. And let's kind of drag our sky. So it's part of Taurus near Venus. We have a beautiful cluster of stars called the Pleiades. And we're just kind of clicking and dragging it so we can get a nice zoom up of the Pleiades here, sometimes called the Seven Sisters. Now this is a view that you might be able to see fairly decently with just a pair of binoculars. Way more than seven stars, there are hundreds of them. Beautiful, relatively young stars, only on the order of about 10 million years or so. So very young as far as stars are concerned. So you'll lose count if you have a pair of binoculars and you're trying to see this, but do check it out with whatever you have at home because I think you will be thoroughly impressed at what you can see with what you already have at home. The Pleiades is very special for a lot of cultures. It's very easy to see, quite visible, very prominent. And it's even visible in the Southern Hemisphere, just like Orion here, for example. So this is one of the best examples of a star cluster throughout the world. So you've got two star clusters, all within the same constellation of Taurus the Bull. But I hope you realize that when you find one constellation, it's not too far to go to find another. It's sort of like puzzle pieces, the constellations. So for example, look at these boundary lines, which might be kind of hard to see on a small screen, but we like to say that they are like puzzle pieces. So when you start to see one, then another, they fit together to form a bigger picture of the night sky. And just for fun, just for fun, this is kind of neat. This is a tricky constellation to see, but there is, lo and behold, a unicorn in the sky. Monoceros is the name. It's not made up of several bright stars or many at all. They're very dim, so clear dark skies to see something close to this. And if you have trouble, hey, that's quite all right. That's what Stellarium is here for, to get you primed for it. But in these times, maybe we want something even more fantastic than dogs, a bull, or a human. We have a special unicorn watching over us as we make our way into the true spring night sky. So get out there and see what you can find. Let us know what you found. If you've made up your own constellations, your own stories, your own patterns in the sky, we'd love to hear about what you see. Again, make the stars your own. And above all else, keep looking up. We'll see you next time.